Good morning. Firstly, I'm sorry for the noise. It's blowing a gale outside and I can't get the workshop door closed. Um, this video is about low kickback chainsaw chains. Um, I'm doing it because I got a question about one of um, on one of my videos, a chap asking if a low kickback chain was the same as a semi chisel chain. The answer is that it isn't. Um, it's a it's a design feature of the chains. You can actually get low kickback semi chisel and full chisel and skip chains if you want. So I thought I'd just make you a, a video here to just show you what a low kickback chain is and just illustrate what why they work or how they claim to work. Okay, so let's zoom in and have a look at what's going on here. Now we're going to look at this chain first. <laughs> By the way, I hope you um I hope I hope you like my um my Hollywood like uh, stage setup that I've got here. Now, if you have a look at um, this chain, now you'll see that, see the, the, the chain goes in this direction on the saw. You'll see that you have your cutting tooth, you'll see that you have your tie strap, and you'll see that you have your drive link. Your drive link is what the socket grabs and pushes the, the chain around. Now, what causes kickback is when this tooth here actually um, digs too deeply into the wood, stops the chain or makes the chain bounce out of the cut, flies it back in your face, then you're counting your fingers. Um, or you're counting how many noses you still have left on your face, which isn't great. Um, if you're an experienced user, you know how to avoid kickback. Um, but if you hit something solid in, in wood, if you hit a nail or something, it can still happen even then. So what the, um, what the manufacturers did this is a chain off my um, what, 441. What the manufacturers did was they introduced, um, if you like, a, a modified um, a modified drive link to actually restrict how deeply this cutting tooth could um, can accidentally dig into the wood. So if we have a look at um, if we have a look at this chain here, which is also from a 441, there's your there's your drive link. Now if you actually look on the other side of the drive link, you'll see there's a raised section here. And what that does is it stops the tooth cutting too deeply into the wood. Note that this raised section is actually different, separate to the raker on the tooth, which is used for clearing out the cut wood from the kerf. And the idea is that by the time you actually file that down and you hit that, that's the end of the life of the chain. Not all chains have this. Now, when I buy a when I buy a chain, um, I'll, I'll take whatever's in the shop. I prefer when I'm working on big wood with heavy saws. I prefer a non-low kickback chain because they do slow the work down a little bit, and they're very difficult to do bore cuts with. And a bore cut is um, is something you do often rely on. For instance, if you're if you're dealing with a with a heavy leaner, or you're trying to release some internal tension. Now let's have a look at this chain here. This is from my, what is this, 230. And you will see here we have the, the cutting tooth, the, ra the raker, the tie strap, and the drive link. And the drive link has nothing on the other side of it. Nothing up there to protect or cover that raker. Unlike this, which does Again, you can really see the difference there. Let's move them across. Now, anti-kickback becomes um, becomes more important when um, when you're working up a tree. And so here I have my two other two top handle saws. I tend to use um, chains from my 150 and from my 193. So low kickback becomes a bit more important when that chainsaw is six inches from your face rather than two feet from your face and so um, I'll take this off actually and I'll bring it up close to the camera let's see there we go you can see the drive link and you can see the elevated section on the top which is separate to the rager you can really see that there that is a low kickback it's a classic example of a low kickback chain the drive link has this raised section on the top. Again, I'll show you this, um, the 230. The drive link does not. 
so there's really nothing to stop that chain digging into the wood. Now I'll move across to my little 150, my favourite saw. And we'll have a look at this and you will see that this too has, I'll turn around, this too has a modified redesigned drive link. I'm trying to, come on, focus please, focus. There you go, a modified redesigned drive link with that elevated section on top to stop a cutting tooth digging into the wood too deeply. <laughs> when I'm working on the ground I don't really care for the most part <clears throat> what type of chain I'm using. Um, it's more important to keep your chain sharp and well maintained. Um, I prefer, if I have the choice, I prefer to use a non-low kickback chain because it's quicker, especially if I'm working in the forest. If I'm working in a domestic urban environment where you're likely to hit rubbish, if I see a, a low kickback chain in a toolbox, I'll put that on. But it doesn't really make that much difference to me. But when I'm working up trees, I use low kickback chains. Now, this is interesting because... Um, I'm not sure if I actually provide non-low kickback chains for um, good quality top-handled aerial work chainsaws. So there we go. Video for you. Um, I'm videoing very small, very detailed things. There's a gale blowing outside, so I can't really um, get this out into daylight. Um, I hope you're able to see. I hope you're able to see the difference between the two. We'll have one last final. Show and tell. Let's have a look. There we go. Those two that I'm pointing to there. The one on the right. Not a low kickback. The one on the left. Is a low kickback. So there we go. And it's because of that, that gizmo there, that raised section on the drive link. So now you know, um, if you are not a professional user, if you're an occasional user, please by all means use a low kickback chain. It'll probably save your face. Um, you might go a little bit slower in the job, but that's all. Nothing to worry about there. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, remember, please like and subscribe. I'm, uh, I'm actually getting quite a few uh, subscribers now and uh, the more subscribers I get the more videos I make um, and I do appreciate you watching if you have any questions um, just um, just pop them in the um, in the comments below and I always try to answer every question that I'm asked thanks a lot now have a good day stay safe bye